Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me. This is Ableton's Wavetable Explained. My name is Scott Dugan, and I am an Ableton Certified Trainer from Atlanta, Georgia. Now in this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know about Wavetable. It's a brand new synth that comes with Ableton Live 10 Suite. So if you have something like Standard or Intro, you won't automatically have Wavetable. It's a great reason to upgrade to Suite. Now this synth uses a technique called wavetable synthesis to produce its sound. Now, in wavetable synthesis, we're using a collection of different looping samples. That is called our wavetable. But we're only listening to one of those samples at a time. For example, in this wavetable, we have one, two, three, four samples. And they are going to loop over and over and over again when we hold a note. So if I press a note on my MIDI controller, we can hear that sine wave, that sample looping over and over and over again, giving us that pure sine wave tone. I can change this to a triangle wave or a ramping sawtooth or more of a square or pulse. Now that's nice. However, wavetable synthesis gets really interesting when we start to move and sweep between the different samples in our table like this. And we can use modulation to do that for us. Now, this is a very simple and basic wavetable, but there are a ton to choose from. Let's see what this one sounds like. And in this example, we have a bunch of different samples that we're sweeping or moving through. Now this synth is broken up into three main areas. We have the oscillator section, the filter section, and the modulation section. In the oscillator section, we have two main oscillators, oscillator one and oscillator two. And we can flip back and forth by clicking on the two different tabs. We can also turn these on and off however we want. Right now, oscillator one is on. We can turn that off and activate or turn on oscillator number two. We can also add in a sub oscillator. Now the synth is laid out very well, but there are tabs and I'm not a fan of tabs. So we can hit this little triangle button and pop up to get expanded view. Now there's nothing hidden in a tab or a menu. Everything is available to us at once and it's bigger and easier to see. Now over here on the left, we have the sub oscillator section. Of course we can activate it or deactivate it. We hear nothing because nothing is turned on. No oscillator is active. If I turn that on, we can play that sub. We have gain control over that sub oscillator. We also have a tone knob. At 0%, this is a pure sine wave. But if we turn that up, we get some harmonics. We can also change the octave. And then we have a global transpose after that. It's as simple as saying, I know the key of C on my keyboard, but I wanna play in D. So we're gonna go up to semitones. And now we've transposed. Next to that, in the middle, we have the controls for our two analog style filters. And we'll come back to that in a video as well. Over on the right, we have the modulation section. And these are your typical ADSR envelopes with a couple extra little benefits. After that, we have two LFOs. And then there's a matrix to make all of those assignments. Basically, we want a control over what modulates what parameter. At the top, we have our internal sources. And then over on the left, we have our target parameter. We can also use MIDI information to modulate parameters. Let's say we want to use velocity to control the pitch or aftertouch to control the pitch. We can do that as well. And if we pop this up again, tabs disappear. Everything is available to us at once. Finally, over here on the right, we have some global controls. We have volume. This is the main output volume of the synthesizer. We can change the polyphony. Right now, we've restricted this to eight notes. We can Bring that down if we want. And we can change this from a polyphonic instrument to a monophonic instrument. 
Now I can only play one note at a time. Once you do that, we have access to glide. All right. And finally, after that, we have unison. Right now it's turned off. Let's make this polyphonic again. There we go. And we have a couple different options as far as our unison setting. We go to classic, make this a four voice unison. We can hear that nice spread and detuning happening. And we have full control over that unison amount and the voices. Now, just like with any device in live, wavetable can be deactivated or muted. We can also save a preset when we find something that we like. And we can go into hot swap mode and swap in and out any preset that comes with live, any preset that we make, or any other device we want to. The last thing I want to do is just give you some pretty interesting presets to listen to. And that has no effects on it. That is simply a synthesizer using wavetable synthesis. To morph between different samples. Let's do one more. In the pad section. And this is using wavetable within an instrument rack. We can also create some interesting percussive sounds. And even though this has some effects on it, we're only using Wavetable to create the original sound there. Of course, synthesizers and synth sounds are going to be great with Wavetable. All right, so there are just a few examples of what Wavetable can do. I highly recommend that you do some experimenting. Check out the built-in presets. I know the guys at Ableton spent a lot of time coming up with these different sounds. In the next video, let's go over the oscillator section. I'll see you then.